Hey, it's Annie from White Lace Cottage. I'm not going to share a uh, tutorial or anything like that today. Um, instead, I just want to talk a little bit about my sales. It's going to be like a rambling, actually, video. Just ramble about some different things, whatever. Um, so, grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of tea, grab a margarita, glass of wine if it's later in the day, and just sit. And uh, last week I shared that I was having a sale at my house. We're downsizing your house. Um, that I didn't take photos or I didn't do a video of when I set it up. I really wish I would have, but it was just so crazy. It was crunch time trying to get everything done and then it was like, oh, you know, trying to get it done. So I didn't have time to do that. Um, but I did take photos, so I am going to share uh, photos of what it looked like I'll set up at the end of this video. Was amazing. Okay, this is what we did different this year. I've been doing the sale for three years. Um, this year, I, I, I usually call it a pop-up shop. And what a pop-up shop is, because some people have asked me, like, what's a pop-up shop? Okay, a pop-up shop is basically a shop that you pop up like in a garage. Um, it's a great way if you, you know, paint furniture or whatever and you don't want to go somewhere and rent space because you have to pay for that and also, you know, haul all your stuff in a vehicle, drive it there, unload it, whatever you don't sell, load it back up, then go back home, unload it again. It's a lot of work. I, I did shows years and years ago and I'm not doing them anymore because they're just too much work for me. Doing a sale in my garage the last three years. This year was a little bit different because I'm downsizing so my prices were like rock bottom, like I need to get rid of it kind of thing. I was just gonna do a one day sale um, from 11 to eight and just, you know, get rid of everything. But my friend that I, uh, did the sale with suggested to do a pre-sale invite the dealer friends that we know that are looking to buy stuff so they can resell because our prices were like dealer prices they were like super duper cheap so we did that on Thursday for two hours and it was like a tornado we they practically bought everything that we had I mean they just like it was like a tornado they just hit all their piles everywhere of all of our stuff it was awesome um, so what we had to do that night is we had to actually make my garage look like I had stuff in it because that's how empty it was. It was like so empty. I left everything and spread things around and the next day I sold the rest of it. So good to have everything out of the house. I cannot tell you how wonderful it feels to get rid of stuff in the house. So I'll give you a couple of little clicks because like I said, this is going to be a ramble video. If you're planning on having a sale and you want to do like a pop-up shop where you want to you paint furniture or you make something or whatever and you want to do like a little shop like in your garage, make it look like a shop first. This year I didn't say that because I knew my prices were going to be really cheap. They're probably cheaper than a garage sale. I mean they were like dirt cheap. Having a sale that you are selling things that you, you know, are painting or whatever, make sure you say that in the ad because otherwise you're going to have garage sale people are going to say, I'm not paying $50 for a chair. You know, they want to pay $3 for a chair. Do a garage sale, pop-up sale. Make sure that you advertise. That's a mistake I made the first time. I just put it in Craigslist, which is advertising, but it's not enough. So I put it in a paper. I advertise on several uh, Facebook classifieds. And um, we, we did put it in Craigslist again, too. So all that advertising paid off. Okay, so this is totally off subject. Um, when I was a little girl, which is a long time ago, I used to watch the Carol Burnett show. Like, oh my gosh, I loved Carol Burnett. I have red hair. She has red hair. So I thought she was so funny. Um, I wanted to be funny. And I would just laugh so hard at that show that I would cry. And I was just like, I was just, just, I just loved her so much when I was a kid. And I watched her show every week and just like, you know, when she went off the ear, I was just devastated. I cried for, I think, a month, okay? But I loved Carol Burnett. And my mom knew how much I loved her. And so she got the address, I don't know where she got the address for CBS, and said, why don't you write a, a letter and maybe she'll write you back. Well, she didn't write me back, which is fine. I don't think she did. If she did, I don't have that letter anymore. I wish I did. I'm trying to think if she did. I don't remember. But, um, so I said to her, I still actually have the envelope that says the Carol Burnett show on it. 
um, and my old address and everything. And she sent me a photo, um, an autographed photo. It's in bad shape because I'll tell you a quick story about this. Um, my older brother who was, um, I don't know, we had a fight and he's like, I'm going to rip it or whatever. And I got all upset and I, some of the, uh, some of her autograph came off because I was crying because he was going to ruin this. But I still have it after all these years. It's kind of wrinkled and everything, but it's my very first autograph. And then after that, I, I wrote her a couple other times. And so, you know, I have one of Tim Conway. I have one, um, this one actually looks like it might actually have been signed. Because these other ones, what I was going to say is they look like they're stamped. Because some of the same exact autograph is on the other, on my other photos. So I'm with this. Well... My husband surprised me, and I'm going to see Carol Burnett tomorrow at the Chicago Theater. I'm like so excited. Um, it's like a question and answer thing, so at the beginning of the show, when she would say, okay, let's put the lights up and ask questions, that's what it's going to be. That's oh, if I'm going to get picked. I hope that I do. I was a little girl. I'm just honored that I'm able to go and be in the audience. So when I share this video, I'm going to be sharing it after I already go, so I might, I'll know. So the next video I share, I'll let you know if I got to ask a question. I hope that I do, um, but I just can't wait to see her because I just love her. Like I said, when I was a little girl, I wanted to grow up and be Carol Burnett. Um, didn't happen. Comments, what I was going what, what to ask you, if you want to put in the comments, because I would love to know. Like, have you met a celebrity before? Um, is there anybody that you really admire and you finally got to meet him? Was it all that you thought it would be? Or I met um, Pat Benatar. Um, I went backstage and met her. She's really, really sweet. She's super, super tiny, tinier than you think. She's like this little, she's just cute. I love her. I saw two members of Paul McCartney's band at the airport. That counts. I didn't ask for their autograph though because I always feel like, you know, uh, if, if somebody is like offering autographs, like I met Joan Jett, okay, she had a concert, she was like, it was like out, an outside concert, and she set up a table and signed everyone's autograph. Seriously, how cool is that? Totally did not have to do that, but she waited till everybody that wanted an autograph got an autograph. She was the coolest person, loved Joan Jett. But if I saw Joan Jett out somewhere, I would never go up to her and ask for an autograph. I just wouldn't do that. I just think it's sort of rude, personally, in my opinion. I don't think she owes me anything. Oh, so if, if they're, you know, if it's something like that where they're, whatever, I would ask, but I would never, ever, ever go up to a celebrity and ask for an autograph. I mean, even when we saw Paul's band members, I didn't ask him for an autograph. You know, I just was like, hey, great show, whatever. But I, anyway, so I just want to share that because I'm really ex excited to see her. I hope I get picked. And let me know. Let me know. I would love to hear if you've ever met a celebrity. And I'd love to know who it is. Okay. So another thing I wanted to mention really quick is I am going to be working on some projects besides patching up all the damn holes in this house that I have. And I have a lot of them because that's another thing. Next house? Uh-uh. I'm not going to be hanging stuff all over my walls because then you make holes everywhere. You have to patch it up. You can see where you patch it up. Maybe not in photograph, but if you're in the house, like, oh, I have to live with it for a while. But I'm going to do some fun things. Um, I'm going to change up the kitchen a little bit. I have some plans, um, but I don't want to share all the plans yet because I just have to work on some things. But one thing is for sure. I'm going to do something fun with my kitchen island. I'm kind of bored with it. The island around it, seriously, I'm not even kidding. I don't know what they use, but I think they use cardboard. Okay, Especially on the back part of our, our island where, um, where our stools are. I swear it's cardboard. It is. It's not wood. It's totally not wood. You can go like this and it moves. It's not wood. I painted it and then I was like, uh, I was getting marks on it. And then I decided to use beadboard wallpaper. Well, the thing I don't like about the beadboard wallpaper that I got, which I didn't think about, it's, it's very realistic, um, but it's kind of foamy, I guess. So um, it can be easily ripped. There is a company called Stickwood. And so they sell this product that you can use on the you can use on a wall. I'm going to use it on my kitchen island. Basically, all you have to do is cut the piece of wood and stick it on because they have adhesive tape. And what, but if you're gonna, you know, you're in a temporary situation, I, I, I'm assuming that they're going to stick it and they're not going to just fall off the wall. It should be sticky enough. That's what I've been told. 
Um, but people can stick them on the walls and you can take it off the wall and you don't ruin the wall. So you don't have to put like a bunch of nails on your wall or anything like that. Yes, except it's, um, it's gray. And so I'm going to use this. I, I was thinking about doing this white. The reason I'm not doing white is because I have white cabinets. I think it's going to be too much white. I think I need some contrast. So it's a gray color that I'm going to use. And it's very rustic looking and I love it. So I wanted to kind of make it look sort of old even though it's new. That's what I'm going to be doing in my kitchen, which means that I'm going to be using a saw for the first time, which I'm a little freaked out about because I've never used a an electric saw like ever. I've used hand saws, but I'm not hand sawing all this, that's for sure. I think they come in pretty big pieces. So I don't know how many cuts I'm gonna have to make. So that's gonna be a new experience. And I'll be sharing how you can still have style in your house, even with less. You don't have to fill your house up with stuff. But hey, if filling your house up with stuff makes you happy, then go for it. I just don't have time to take care of it anymore. And I just feel the need to get rid of stuff. And I'm telling you, I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I just love it so much. And that's it for today. I hope you liked this little chat that I did. And hopefully, <clears throat> we'll see next time. Hopefully I'll be sharing a project. I'm, I'm gonna have to wait for my product to come in. And then I'm gonna start doing it. So um, you're gonna see me use a saw for the first time. Never used one before. That's it. Thank you so much for joining me. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much for supporting this channel. Make sure you follow me on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, you know, all the, all the social media, basically. I'll put the links below. That's it. Stay shabby. I'll see you next time. Bye. Cheers.